Over time many questions have been asked of me and in most cases also answered. But since they are in the comments of a video, they are often missed by people having the same questions. So I decided to do a fact on video. And start right away with the first one. Many of my videos contain the remark at the end that I don't do buying advice. Despite that I am asked often by people what to buy, elegantly hidden in third person hypothesis. Sometimes when there is only one answer possible, like with should I stop my music hobby, I am stupid enough to answer. That then is seen as an opportunity by others and the what should I buy question start again. Now why won't I give buying advice, even if the viewer clearly states that he won't hold it against me if the advice would turn out badly? Well I don't want to disappoint you. It is impossible to know the combination of your system, your listening environment, your choice of music and your personal preferences, let alone things that might be of influence that you are not even aware of. What I can do, and that's what I do all the time, is to look for equipment that might be of above average price performance, review that and tell you where it will fit in in one of my three reference sets. Number 3 costed below 1000 euros, setup 2 around 4000 euros and setup 1 around 20000 euros. See the link in the comments for a full description. Usually it's not possible to do a fair comparison between two almost equal products. There will be many that will disagree but I have had a publishing company where perhaps the best audio journalist of my country worked. One of them also worked for Stereophile. Often we didn't agree on what product we liked better within a comparable group of products. We could agree on the level of sound quality but rarely on a winner. One found fierce attacks of the snare drum the most important, the second the stereo image and clean mid-range, the third the overall dynamics and the fourth was somewhere in between. Again, provided the equipment was in the same quality class. Therefore I try to give you an impression of the quality class a product is in. The rest is up to you. Only when I am pretty sure a given product or setup at that time outperforms anything else, I will be clear on that. See for instance the SOTM SMS 200 Ultra review. Headphones have become rather popular these days and from an entrepreneurial standpoint I would love to review them. But even the best ones don't give me listening pleasure. So I had two options, make up fake reviews or just be honest about it and don't do headphone and in-ear reviews. Obviously I chose for the last option. And please don't mail me that headphones can give enormous pleasure, for I know I've seen it around me. It's just not my thing. I've had many requests to review cables, often mentioning brands and types that were on the wishing list. Although all components in a stereo should be of equal quality, there are no com components that can have an equal big effect on the sound than cables. They can be influenced a lot by the equipment they are connected to. A good example is a wideband amplifier used with woven cables. Due to the high capacitance of those cables that amp might oscillate to some degree and so ruining the sound completely. The amp is great, the cables are great, but they shouldn't be combined. Less obvious are the interlinks where the electrical dimensions of the output and the input they are connecting are such that the cable can have all kinds of effects. So you should always try cables in situ. Find a dealer that will accept them back if they are not to your likings. Of course undamaged and in the original packing. Sometimes a dealer has a set of burned in cables that you can hire or lend and if you like them buy a new set of them. Trust your ears and only pay for improvements. And if you like the sight of those fist thick loudspeaker cables that don't sound better and are willing to pay for the view, be my guest. 
On a show someone told me he bought advanced power amps, for he liked the large view meters on the front. At least he was honest about it, and those amps were fine with or without view meters. I have been asked often to report on my three setups, sometimes I was asked to do a video on. There is a complete list of the equipment I use on my website, thehbproject.com. The links are below this video in YouTube. I will not do a video on the setups since that doesn't tell you much more than the list of equipment. Furthermore, I love my privacy and it would take considerable production time to make that into an agreeable video. I had an unfortunate school career. I grew up in a middle class family, all hairdressers, in a period where Europe was rebuilding itself from the Second World War. Had I grown up under different conditions I might have found fitting education, but I didn't. I'm not complaining and certainly not blaming my parents for they did all they could and sometimes tried to do even more. But I did end up in the wrong schools, like the school for retail business. So I became a school dropout and started working as a salesperson in what, in what was then the high-end audio shop in the Netherlands, Muziek Stafhorst. In my spare time I read about anything I could find on audio. Joined friends in a small recording studio that we run in our spare time and became a recording specialist at Stafhorst. After eight years I shifted jobs to a distributor of professional audio gear as a sales rep. I visited many studios and professional musicians and learned a lot. One of the things I learned was that I was a poor sales rep, for I started to know too much of the equipment I sold. By accident I met the editor in chief of the leading Dutch hi fi magazine, Hi Fi Stereo Test, and told him that an article on noise reduction was full of errors. He asked me to write a proper article and that is where I found my love for this work. I became a full time tech journalist in 1983 and soon wrote for many tech magazines in my country and some UK magazines on pro audio. In 1989 I started my own publishing company, publishing the very well respected pro audio magazine that later also included professional video and thus became pro audio video. In those years I have reviewed professional analog and digital recorders and supervised brilliant colleagues doing reviews on the first digital mixing consoles. In 2003 I started a second magazine focusing on streaming audio and video for the consumer. That was 15 years ago and a bit early. The publishing company stopped since print on specialist subjects was a diminishing market and thus unable to survive the bank recession. Over the years I have been studying audio helped by the fact that journalists have easier access to people with knowledge. Over all those years I also developed my listening skills. I learned a lot about video from my work for, with the ProMag and started making holiday movies to get some feel with making programs. I have worked with Avid at Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro and some other video editing programs I and the market forgot the name of. It must have been in 2005 that I made the first video podcast for the consumer magazine Wi-Fi. The knowledge I have accumulated over the years was mainly discovered and developed by people smarter than I am. I could be sad about the publishing company that went broke, but that's silly. We all knew that print sooner or later will phase out, starting with vertical markets in small language areas like the Dutch language area with only about 20 million people in the Netherlands and Belgium speaking that language. 
So I started my project to tell people about the joy of good music reproduction at home on a website, the hbproject.com. I had been developing a two-step approach to loudspeaker placement, but realized I needed some animation to explain it well. This ended up uh, being a video I published on YouTube in May 2014 and it was extremely popular right away. This video still is the most watched on my channel, the link is in the comments, in the top right corner and at the end of this video. That got me thinking, so I started experimenting making videos of my written review. It took me more than a year of preparation before I was more or less satisfied and after my vacation in 2015 I started publishing videos on a regular basis to end up publishing one video a week now. That led to the 2.6 million views in total at the end of May 2018 and being viewed 140,000 times, almost 700,000 minutes in total per month. The editorial is never paid for, like with my magazines back in the day. Companies are invited to support the channel and will be mentioned at the beginning of this video, but they only buy eyeballs and not editorial influence. And you, as a viewer, if you want to stay up to date, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon or PayPal. Any financial support is much appreciated. The links are in the comments and help me to help even more people enjoy music at the home by telling your friends on the web about this channel. I am Hans Beekhuizen. Thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.